Friends, meet it. Meet it. Six days a week. As our home. Yeah. Right, good morning, everybody. Welcome all to Crook House. Okay, Crook House is what we call the Crook Frame Building. The reason it's called the Crook Frame Building is because it was made from crooked pieces of wood or crooked trees. Yeah. So what the carpenters would do is they would cut a crooked tree down and then they would take the tree and they would get a saw and they would saw it all the way up the middle and cut it in half yeah? and then they would join the pieces together like that and that's where your crook frame comes from yeah? Can you see that? First question this is uh, how I cut timber without circular saws and um, chainsaw, I suppose, have to use a saw with handle at either end. And the way they did it is they had a, a really big saw with handles at both ends. And when they wanted to cut uh, a log, they put the log over a pit, and one man stood on the top and the other man stood underneath. So the man at the top pulled the saw up and the man below pulled the saw down. Now of course the man below probably got covered in sawdust. But actually I'm not sure whether this job was harder because at least he was having to pull down and when pulling the big heavy saw up. But it was, you're absolutely right, it was all done by hand and it was done with saws and axes. Now, these two parts, once they're sawed in half, are called blades. Yeah? And this, this building is actually built with three blades. And you can tell that the log is sawn down the middle, because if you look at the pattern on that side, yeah, it's the same as the pattern <coughs> on that side. So if we go out later on and we look at the blades of this building, and we'll, we'll see if there's any little knots or patterns on that side, what match? that side. Once you've got your blades, you want your blades to stand up and not slide apart and fall down. Yeah? Now what they used to do was they used to put the poles into the ground and bury them. But the problem is, is when you put wood into the ground, it rots. So what they've done on these old buildings is they build a stone plinth all the way around the bottom to sit the building on top of the stone plinth. Because what they say about oak wood, which is what this building is made of, is that if you give it a good hat and boots, then it will last forever. So it needs a good hat and boots. You keep it dry, then the wood will last for many hundreds of years. So this building has got a stone plinth around the bottom. Now, if we're gonna stand the building on a stone plinth, what will happen is the building will slide apart like that. So we have to do something to stop the building sliding apart. So what the carpenters would do is they would build a collar across there and that was then called an iframe. And that iframe stopped the building sliding apart. So because the building would pull on the iframe, the carpenters would make a special joint which would resist being pulled apart. Yeah? And that joint was called a dovetail joint. And you see, it's in the shape of a dovetail. Yeah? So, what, so what the carpenters would do is they would make a dovetail joint. And as you can see, that joint, you can't pull it apart now, can you? Because, see how strong? And then, to, to make sure it stayed together, they didn't use glue, they used little wooden pegs. And they put the peg in the hole, and then that joint, stays together all by itself. And if we look around Crook House, we can find lots of these pegs. Yeah? So a dovetail joint is a joint you can't pull apart that way. 
Mm. Okay, the next type of giant you'll see then to put all the straight pieces is, it's called a mortise and tenon giant, yeah? So that's the mortise where the carpenter would use a chisel to chisel a hole all the way through, yeah? yeah. And then they cut something called a tenon, which fits in the hole, like that, yeah? And then I put the pegs in. So you can't pull the tenon out. And that giant is very strong when you put weight on it so they can put floor there. And that giant is very strong downwards. Yeah? You'll, what you will notice about tenon is you can see the end of the tenon sticking out the other end of the wood. And if we look around the building, we can see where the tenons, where we can find some mortise and tenon giants. Now one final type of giant then is the giant which holds all the roof together, yeah? And they would join the, the blades or the crooks up with something called the ridge board, which is that giant right at the top of the building what runs all the way along, yeah? Can you see it? So that one right in the centre is called the ridge board. And if the piece of wood wasn't long enough, they would join it together with a scarf joint, yeah? And again, there are some scarf joints in this building. Some scarf joints used to have a little peg in as well, but not all of them. Some of them just, just fit together like that, so that's a scarf joint. Okay, so that's the three main types of joints that are used in a timber crook frame building, yeah? Now what makes this building different from all the other timber frame buildings is this is a timber crook frame, and I think it's the only one left in Litchfield. There are other timber frame buildings but they're called box frying buildings, so they're um, much lighter. This is a very early and very ancient method of building houses. There used to be two main types of timber building, the box frame construction and the crook. Box frame was, the name suggests, a box mainly prefabricated sections that were made up and then entered in the site to form a shell of a building. With the roof supported on beams carried on to top plates, or wall plates on the upper frames, thus transmitting the roof flow down to the ground via the framework below. Crook construction was mainly made up in situ of the roof load and carried directly from apex to the ground via pairs of arching beams, such as you see at the exposed end of the timber house illustrated above. Would anybody like to, um, perhaps if we go outside first, yeah. and let's see if we can find, um, we, can, we can certainly look for the ends of some tenon joints, can't we? Yeah? So let's have a look for some ends. And actually in here, can, can anybody see any dovetail joints? Can anybody see a dovetail joint at all? I can actually see one, two, three, four from where I'm sitting. Well, there, That's it, yeah, can you yeah. see it? So if we look there, there's the mortise and tenon joint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Oh yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, that bit, yeah. See the mortise and tenon joint there? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember I told you there's a scarf joint? Yeah. Look, there's a scarf joint there. Yeah. In the in the development of Stow Street was a, a community outside the city walls in the thirteen hundred. The Crook House is a fine example of the type of early timber construction. It was rebuilt slightly off its original site, uh, site and used as an old people day centre by the city council in 1971 and is now a public meeting hall.
Crookhouse Facts. It was two houses then made into one house. Crookhouse was dis discovered in Stowe Street in 1950s. It was central stored in 1960s during 16th century and animals were brought in the crook house at night to sleep up and family slept upstairs. Crook House is the most interesting part of Litchfield's history back in the 50s or thereabouts. Much of Stone Street was being modernised and many of the old buildings were demolished during the demolition process. This jointed Crook, crook and Park Box framed house was revealed from within the outer clouding of a building whose outer walls had hidden the framework supporting it. Luckily someone spotted it even during the demolition process and called it a Called a halt, and so we have this rare specimen of a building which probably originated in the 14th or early 15th century, now fully restored and still in delay, used as a meeting house and learning centre. Thank <laughs> you.